Hey guys, Ajax22 here, and I just wanted to share with you some cool uh, and a new little bit unusual variations on the 870 that I've got kicking around. Uh, they were all in the same place, so I figured, hey, good opportunity for a random video. So uh, this is it. Um, starting, I guess, at the bottom, this is a uh, 870 Wingmaster. It was built on an old CNR receiver, I think 1952. Uh, and then pieced together. Uh, it's got the original um, bayonet lug adapter. It's, um, you know, an actual factory part made by um, Remington for the uh, Mark I uh, contract guns for the military back in the 60s. Uh, these were the replacement units. The original, the first generation ones, had a Remington... Um, rifle front sight instead of the bead set on the top of them. Uh, that's how you can tell the after the, re, the replacement units from the ones that were actually issued on the Mark 1s. Um, as you can see from the, the wood foreend, the uh, Mark 1 is similar in contour to the police um, foreend. No ribs though, and it goes back longer. It actually uh, overlaps the receiver a little bit. Um, somehow I managed to find this one just kicking around. I think I actually have two of these. I have another 870 somewhere. Um, not sure where. Just, uh, you know, tracking gets to be a bit of a pain in the ass. The, um, these actually wind up being really smooth. The action bars combined with the Wingmaster, um, really, the Wingmaster guts really give it a good smooth, um, action, <laughs> for lack of a better worm better word um, yeah this one is actually going to wind up as a reproduction of the infamous mark one photographs of the guy on the carrier um, so to that end have a sage international stock that's going on it um, as you can tell sage stock has just a hole so you have to allen wrench it or uh, allen screw it uh, but you need a specific one that threads into the back of the receiver. You can't use the factory uh, 870 stud. Um, so, something to keep in mind. Um, rather randomly, I actually stored this uh, stock off of one of the uh, current production airsoft guns. Um, and it's a surprisingly accurate and true to form setup. Uh, the biggest difference, of course, is that this is aluminum and the construction is just not as burly as the Sage. The Sage is just way overkill. I don't know if the current generation Sage stuff is aluminum, but as you can see, there's more positions available for the uh, the aluminum one versus the Sage one. I just, I don't know. They, they, they're, th these ones are burly, um, but they're not they're not as over the top as the Sage. So I'm gonna shoot this and see what happens. Uh, if it bends, breaks, um, impales my shoulder, then I will not recommend you go out and buy an airsoft gun to get the accessories to put on a real gun. Because generally speaking, that's a pretty bad idea. But um, this one holds on surprisingly well. It has the uh, Knight's Armament uh, knockoff rail that's, uh, that's on it. Pretty decent setup. Um, and I put the little Tommy gun pistol grip on it just because that's what I had on it. I actually had a, a pair of these set up with uh, twin pistol grips, and this was just sort of the first one that I laid my hands on. Um, but yeah, so this one is going to be getting that uh, Sage stock. It's got a speed feed on it right now, but that's going away. The one here, you're never, probably never going to see one of these again. Um, as you can see, the the sheet metal on it is the military Mark I sheet metal, but it has no bayonet lug. This is, um, I believe, and I could be wrong, but given the source, this came out of a, a, a guy who had a, a gun store in like the, uh, I don't know, mid 90s, and uh, it closed down with a whole bunch of like random inventory. So he uh, he wound up with 
a decent amount of uh, random stuff. And you can see the, the drill pattern looks about the same. Screws look about the same. Um, one thing you'll note on the, uh, on the military version, the screws are on the left side. Um, to make the sheet metal work, they left the hole for the bead sight, but they flipped the top the top piece. The top piece is um, what in the, what it, what lets the this top piece is what lets the the screw heads seat. So they flipped it over so that they could put the sling on the right side, and they just attached the sling to one of the uh, one of the screws instead of to the bayonet lug, which. I don't know why they do that, but it's it's really brilliant. I've never seen one of these before. I didn't know they existed. It's one of those parts that just sort of turns up, and if you've really been in the trenches with the 870 parts, you're sort of like, and the heck is this? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I put it on a two-shot extension instead of a three. I think it'll fit on uh, the three-shot extension and look more correct, but I really like kind of the, the brutish two-shot uh, thing it's got going on. Um... I'm not sure if that was an intentional. The, the sheet metal looks like it would go either way. Um, but, yeah, it's it's, un, it's unusual. I've, I've never seen one. The, the front screw is longer threads with the same spec screw head as the others. Um, or actually, sorry, it's a little wider. It's a different screw. My bad. Um, Hopefully we can focus on this. It got a little narfed um, in the process. Uh, some of these guns get beat up. I don't really do the safe queen thing. Um, guns uh, get wear as they go on adventures and out into the world. So um, that's just sort of how it winds up. This is kind of a neat one. This was a, a trade-in gun. Um, I think it was LAPD. I'd have to check. I don't. Th I, I'd have to check the records, but. It was a less lethal gun. I had a beat up police fore end that I threw on there because I love beat up wood. This one needs to be uh, sanded a little bit and oiled, but it's got some character to it. Um, just just a neat little ugly thrasher. Behind it, you'll note the uh, the ugly 870 project. Still have to do the ejector in that, but it's here. Um, well, the gun's here. I got to find where where I put the ejector. Um, trying to get all the gun parts organized. Beyond, behind that is actually a a, <laughs> a mean, 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 mean thing. Um, you'll notice it's got the the shell carrier stock that used to be on the um, the pretty um, Mark One that's getting the Sage stock, but um, that's Project Punishment. Project Punishment is your typical everyday 870 Express, with one little tiny different. See this, uh, this slot's nice and small for two and three quarter inch shell. This one seems to be a little bit more extended. Yeah, that got that little, that little cut right there that has the bolt cover extension. This is a three and a half inch Magnum. Um, three and a half inch Magnum with an 18 inch barrel, or 18 and a half inch barrel. Did a real good job on making that one flush. The factory ones aren't that close. Uh, two shot extension. Um, <laughs> a real fold at top folding stock, Remington top folding stock, and uh, you know, yeah, nothing, nothing could possibly be go wrong with that. No one, uh, this is a bad idea. Don't do this. Don't ever build one of these. They don't, you know, it's it's been it's had the, the rib shaved off. Um, ha hasn't really been properly refinished. It just got a quick uh, brush on with some black oxide to keep it from corroding too much. Um, yeah, this is this is it's gonna be evil. We're gonna put a butt plate on this that actually stamps you, um, you know, a reverse uh, engraving of, of something something that says pussy or some or p w n e d pound something of something of that nature, just so that it bruises a pattern into you when the trigger is pulled. Because this this is this is excessive. This should never be. The, my one of my first posts on the internet ever was about. Hey, wouldn't it be like the ultimate 870 if you took a, you know, super magnum and then you put a, uh, well, actually, I think I wanted this front end on it with a top folding stock and then you had the whole thing nickeled. So, I mean, long term, I probably am going to actually go out and get it 
set up like a marine super magnum, which never existed uh, and really shouldn't exist, but will, because why not? Um, and it was just sort of one of those things that when I finally had the opportunity and, you know, a three and a half inch 870 fell into my lap for cheap, I just had to get it because, um, you know, reasons, right? <laughs> I don't have a good one. Uh, one good qu one question people keep asking about is this. Uh, I think this is just a generic um, ATI shell holder that's been cut down off of a side saddle, and with the, and a prior gunsmith actually went and um, did a really clean job of drilling it and tapping it onto the uh, onto the the, the the stock itself. So this this isn't a um, an aftermarket or a fact this isn't a factory accessory I don't believe it uh, it's very well done it's very clean I mean the uh, I don't know if the original side saddles actually had the, uh, the inletting like that but it's really well done whoever did this you know my hat is off to them it's it's clean I might do a few more of these I I've got a couple of these shotguns um, kicking around still and as many of these folding shock folding stocks as I can have come across I, I really prefer those to even to the sage one I have to use I have to put the sage one on my my go-to um, mark one just because it's in the photo uh, I love that photo it's got a real nice aesthetic to it so it, it had to be built um, that said if, as many of these as many of these top folders as I can get I'm I might do this to them I might do something else, I don't know. Um, as the whims strike you. This one, I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, like all the weird little 870 variants that they did, but this is the, this is a uh, 870 Special. It was originally an English straight stock um, 870. It's got a, a very short forend um, tube in there that you can interchange proprietary wood and if you'll note here let's just put these toe to toe the um the barrel is is not in the same the barrel lug is not in the same place they're proprietary so you can't just run a, any old 870 parts they're 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 different they have a, a shorter tube so the neat thing about that is if you're going to do an SBS or, you know, need a slightly more unique look, this makes for a slightly more compact package when it's folded. Um, it you know, folds to there as opposed to clomping around, folding to there. Um, just looks a little bit more clean. This needs to be switched out for some modified police wood, but um, yeah, it's it's unusual. Um, if you have a chance to grab one, I would. Uh, the fi the finish on them is really clean. I don't much care for the vent rib. I'm not much of a vent rib guy. I'll probably eventually wind up taking the vent rib off of the gun, uh, just like they did on uh, Project Punishment here but uh, probably do a better, a cleaner job of uh, either re or doing some kind of a matte finish. Um, but yeah, it's getting together a little bit at a time. Um, I don't remember who, what the manufacturer is, but this is the 870 Airsoft gun. Uh, it's got the detachable mag. This is what the, uh, the knockoff stock came off of, along with the Knight's Armament Rail. Um, I think this thing was like 200 bucks or something, which eh, you, know, you can get you can get the real stock for not too much more than that. Um, so I don't know how good of a value it was, but it's the joys of going to the airsoft stores with your friends who are into airsoft and being like, hey, you know that that looks really close. I wonder if you know X Y Z, and then you have to buy it and take it home and bolt it onto real guns. Um, Anyway, uh, that's some, some unusual 870 variants. I was particularly want to let people in the world know that this exists um, so they can be keeping an eye out for it. I don't know what you would come up for it on a search. I think it's police. 
Um, it's not from, I don't believe it's for any military contracts. I think it's just one of the very early police um, MagTube extensions that they had. Um, yeah, no, no good reason for it. It's really, it's really durable. It's got the same strength as this front end for, you know, smacking people with a bayonet. Works on a two inch. Um, I mean, it just, no, no good reason um, for it not to, not to be in your collection, except that they're hard to find. Um, yeah, somebody needs to make a reproduction of that. It's, it's uh, so much, so much more uh, durable than this little chintzy whatever it is. Um, you know, I mean that, that's, that's a combat gun. You know, that is sort of, eh, well, you know, ish, combat-ish. Um, but yeah, if I could, if I could get a, a dozen of them, I would. And so, <laughs> now you guys know about them and you can be looking for them too and bidding, outbidding me on the internet for when I actually find them. But that's, that's cool. Um, they should go to good homes. Uh, that's, that's about what I got for you. Sorry it's just taking so long. 870s, uh, have a way of breeding in the closet, and, you know, they're all kind of, uh, kind of spiffy and unique and different, and I love them. If, uh, I don't want to get into the Mossberg 500 Remington 870 war, but since I'm going to be doing a, a video on a bunch of the Mossberg stuff that I work on, I want to make sure that the 870 love is, is, is known. Um, I'm an enthusiast with the 870s, and uh, you guys should be too. Keep your eye open for unique parts, and you know know what's available. There's they've done some wonderful things with 870s over the years, and you are not limited to what is on your gun shop shelf. I mean, you can sky's the limit. If you can dream it, the parts probably were made by the factory at some time. Get to scrounging. All right, guys, um, that's what I got for you today, and uh, you know, tell your friends, subscribe, have a good one.